5 historical figures who disappeared and have never been found. Most people who go missing turn up safe and well, within a few hours or days. Unfortunately, some are found dead. When people do leave, the reason is often obvious, because they are running away from something. For example, debt, police, a new partner or a fresh start. It is very rare for people to disappear entirely completely and forever, but occasionally, even prominent figures seem to vanish without a trace for no reason at all. Here, we look at some very cold cases indeed. Number 5. Louis Lee Prince Louis Lee Prince was a pioneer of the motion picture industry, along with the Lumiere brothers and of course, Thomas Edison. As a young man, Lee Prince had frequented the studio of Jacques Daguerre, of daguerreotype picture fame, and became fascinated with first images and then moving pictures, receiving a patent for his Lee Prince single lens cine camera in 1888, ahead of Edison. However, before Lee Prince could get the recognition that he deserved, he disappeared suddenly and mysteriously in 1890 after boarding a train at Dijon, bound for Paris. There are a number of theories about what happened to Lee Prince after he boarded the train, some of them mundane, others slightly more outlandish. It has been suggested that he killed himself because he was on the verge of bankruptcy or disappeared deliberately to avoid being exposed as homosexual. It has also been suggested that his brother murdered him in a row over his mother's will. Lee Prince's widow even maintained that Thomas Edison ordered a hit on him in order to get him out of the way and prevent him from taking the credit for his invention. Whatever you may choose to believe about his fate, what is certain is that Lee Prince's cine camera recorded the world's first moving images with the round hay garden scene in 1888. Number 4. Flannan Isles Lighthouse Keepers All three of the keepers of the Flannan Isles Lighthouse, located in Scotland's Flannan Isles, were found to be missing on December 26, 1900, and were never seen again. It was against the regulations for all three keepers to leave their posts at any one time, particularly during a storm, when the lighthouse would have been a godsend to any ships caught in the rough seas. So why did they all leave their posts? What is known is that when the relief keeper landed on the island, he found the lighthouse deserted. Further investigations showed that the men had certainly been working up until December 15, as their logs showed, and a vessel reported passing the lighthouse that night and noticing that the lamp was not lit, a fact not known at the time. On inspection, the light was found to be in good working order. We'll probably never know what happened to them, although a number of theories have been put forward. One was that, after having previously been fined for not tying down equipment, the three keepers went together to ensure that everything was made safe ahead of the storm, and were either swept off the rocks by a large wave or blown off the side of the cliff in a gale. Another theory suggested that two keepers had gone out to check ropes, and when they didn't return, the third went out to find them, only to perish himself. In 1912, the English poet Wilfred Wilson Gibson published a poem, Flannan Isle, which suggested a much more mysterious end. Dwelling on overturned chairs and untouched meals and supernatural misgivings, for which there was never any basis in fact. Number 3. Bell Gunness. Bell Gunness was a Norwegian American serial killer who vanished from her farm in Indiana on April 28, 1908, after having killed as many as 40 people. By means which would today be called catfishing, Bell struck up pen pal relationships with men who responded to her personal advertisements for investors looking for possible relationships. She corresponded with her victims for a number of months before convincing them to visit, bringing with them their life savings in cash, while telling no one where they were going. The ruse worked surprisingly well, and a number of men, most of them homesick for their native Norway, would turn up at her door with a $1,000 or more wrapped in paper parcels, after which they would never be seen in one piece again. Bell was believed at one time to have died in a fire at her home, where the remains of three charred bodies thought to be her children, and an equally burned female torso were found. Bell's sometime boyfriend, Ray Lamphere, was arrested and questioned and charged with arson. However, when police began to excavate the farmhouse, they found a number of bodies and body parts, that clearly had nothing to do with him. 
It was later believed that the headless torso was not that of Gunness at all but rather her housekeeper, who had mysteriously disappeared. It is certainly true that Gunness had withdrawn large amounts of money from the bank immediately prior to the fire. Lamphere is said to have confessed before his death that he helped Gunness to set the fire and drove her to the train station to make good her escape. Despite numerous sightings in the years following, her whereabouts have never been determined. Number 2. Bobby Dunbar Bobby Dunbar was only four years old in 1912, when he disappeared while on a family holiday in Louisiana. Hundreds of volunteers joined in the search for Bobby, combing the riverbanks, slicing open the bellies of alligators, and even dynamiting the lake, thinking that the blast might dislodge the child's corpse. Bobby appeared to have vanished into thin air until eight months later, he was found alive and well in the care of William Cantwell Walters from Mississippi. Walters was found guilty of kidnapping, despite his vehement protests that the child was in fact his nephew. The child was taken home to his mother, who is said to have exclaimed, Thank God, it is my boy, before fainting. William Walters was convicted of child abduction and sentenced to life in prison though he only served two years. However, in 2004, DNA tests proved that the boy who was rescued from Walters was not Bobby Dunbar, and was in all probability the nephew that Walters had claimed. What happened to Bobby is unclear, but the most likely explanation is that he drowned in the river on the same day he disappeared. Before we show you number one on our top five list, here are some honorable mentions. William Cantillo William Cantillo was the inventor of an early form of machine gun. Sometime in the 1880s, Cantillo told his sons he was going on a business trip to try to sell his new invention and was never seen again. Charlie Ross Charlie Ross was only four years old in 1874, when he and his older brother Walter were enticed into a horse-drawn carriage while they were playing in their garden in Philadelphia. Five-year-old Walter was able to get out further down the street but Charlie was driven away and was never seen again. James William Boyd In 1865, Captain James William Boyd, an officer of the Confederacy, was released after having been captured by the Union. He was due to meet his son and travel to Mexico when he vanished without trace. Solomon Northup Solomon Northup, the author of the famous book, Twelve Years a Slave, disappeared without trace in 1857. His book made into an Oscar-winning film in 2013, recounts the true story of his kidnapping and subsequent sale into slavery. John Lansing Jr. In 1829, John Lansing Jr., former Chief Justice of the New York State Supreme Court, popped out to mail a letter and was never seen again. And number one on our list is Ambrose Small, Canadian millionaire and theater impresario. Ambrose Small disappeared from his office at the Grand Opera House in Toronto, Ontario. On December 2, 1919, the same day that the sale of his theatres was due to go through. Small was certainly in a hurry for the transaction to be completed and was instrumental in moving the signing date up by two weeks. However, although the sale netted Small over $1 million, he never withdrew a penny of the money, all of which was still in the bank when his disappearance was discovered nor was he reported missing by his wife, who assumed him to be in the arms of a designing woman, and it was only on January 3, a month later, that his disappearance was reported in the press. A number of theories abounded at the time, including that he had been killed by his wife and burned in the furnace at the Grand Theatre or that the police had helped Small disappear. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video please do share. And don't forget to subscribe for more such interesting videos.